Anyway guys, walking through Bella Vista here. Just down to an estate pond. I want to do a debate on carp. Something that's going to stir a lot of people up. And this is a good place to start with an overstocked pond, landlocked pond. You can see we're right in the heart of suburbia, so there's these estate ponds, they do have a purpose if they're used properly. Look at that waratahs are out already. It's a winter flower. They're so overpopulated that you're just going to see a muddy, dirty pond, which is a duck pond, carp pond. It doesn't have to be like that. Anyway, we'll go and catch a carp and then debate from there. This is what you call an overpopulated carp pond. Now the beauty of this, see all the bright colours? There's, oh look, there's a beautiful orange and black one there. It's a white and black one. The koi's is the reason why the bass go for the Larry lures. They love it. Look at these guys here. Pole. See, that's just an overpopulation. They're starving. Too many carp. Here's a crack of that one. That orange one's definitely a beautiful fish. And look at the colour of the water. Oh, there's a big eel just went through there. So there's eels in here. Oh, another orange and black one. You know what, they're the one I want to catch. That's just wrong, eh? Right. <laughs> That's too many carp. You can see this pond completely overpopulated with carp, but it's landlocked. So one of the answers to this would be to stock it with bass. Look at them all. Now the biomass of these carp, they'd be eating themselves. Where if we use that biomass to build up bass populations and take them out west. We can restock half grown bass. Take out redfin. Look at them all. Look. Severely in need of management, these pond management, these places. Look at it. It's non-stop. So these ponds are connected but they're landlocked, they can't, wild predators can't get into the system. Which is the reason why the carp are so out of control in this one pond. But we could turn this pond into a, a bass hatchery or a cod hatchery and we could create, you know, half grown fish to go back into an environment full of redfin and that would wipe them out. It's just a thought, food for thought, but if you say we put 10,000 fingerlings in that pond in a year and a half's time, they're all going to be around half a kilo. They're going to eat every redfin that they see out west. Yet, when we stock them as fingerlings out there, they just get eaten by the redfin. So it's a win-win. Why didn't he eat 
like that. Look at this tub. Good cop. <laughs> Come on. Now surely you're not going to comment about me having to kill this fish because have a look around. Chua. I actually want to get one of these koi's before I leave. Come around here, mate. It's a tiny hand line for a big fish. Going off. Anyway, you imagine how many young this carp produces a year. Our favourite lures are gold because bass eat these carp from egg to probably about 20 centimetres. You only have breeders in the system that have carp. So what I'm saying is we put, we, oh, of course we've got to do late management, but if we put like 10,000 fingerlings in here, and then we, oh, where's my flies? We keep them in here landlocked for a year, a year and a half. And then we relocate them out to places like at Lifco, the bass I'm talking about, not the carp. And the bass, like, you and I can't outfish these carp. We've never, it's never done before, it's not going to do it now. Come on, mate. Oh, there, go on. It's never going to happen. So, what I'm proposing is we use these ponds to fatten up bass real quick and then we relocate them into areas that are inundated with redfin and it's a win-win for everyone that way you'll find that the biomass of these bass will reduce dramatically there'll be no more big bass coming up through the system because a big carp I mean the biomass of the carp will reduce dramatically and there'll be no more uh, big carp coming up through this system because the bass will take control of it over three or four years there'll be probably 10% of the carp that are in here now so just to give you an idea of what an overpopulated system's like I've studied carp most of my life in a weird and peculiar way I've seen the changes I've seen how they've gone from completely invasive like we have here to a food source to create a native fishery it's strange because people so many people are so passionate on whether you should kill them whether you should keep them alive I mean these this is just cruel having this many fish in here I won't be killing them though because the way people look upon us yeah. put another one on I'm looking for a koi but I'll grab one of these Little one. So a carp would never get this big if there was bass in here. Ah, <laughs> oh, I can't help it. <laughs> 
Look at him. You gotta have one shot at him. Boys thought that was hilarious. I ain't gonna let you go now. Come on. Behave. I just want my hook back. Come on, come on, come on. Go. On. Oh, that was cool. Now you gotta look for Koi. This is saying that these ponds are landlocked. So they're perfect to, to stop the native. The right depth, the right level, and an abundance of food. And it would clear all this water up, it would be black, it would be clear. And right, we'll move on. Got a wrong car. I truly believe the koi is a much smarter fish than the European car. Definitely. Oh, there's some. See that hook in it now. Edgy McKady, not that one though. Oh yeah, he turned around. That one got it. Stay there for a sec, mate. <laughs> Quite right, no one even knows I got a fishy. Ah. Snapped, I had a knot him on by. That's the end of that. They get educated quick, like those coys were feeding out of my hand before, but not now. I just wanted to show you what an overpopulated water, landlocked water, looked like. And we'll go through the different pondages around here. And the, the two uh, messages I'm trying to get in this video is one, we can use the carp to create a better fishery and eradicate the redfin to a, to a major degree. 
and control the carp as well and two pond management on these estate ponds and we're in dire need of that too you can't just have a pond full of starving carp or a weed infested pond full of bass so that's the two uh, points I'm trying to get across plus you got to realize I'm uh, anti um, when they wanted to put in the the uh, Oh, what was it, a venereal disease to kill all the carp? I was very much against that because I think there's much better uses for the biomass of these fish than just having them dead in our rivers. We haven't got the right to play God for starters, so it's more we manage. We wreck it, we manage it. The best of example of stopping natives to reduce your carp biomass is Penaflate. When we first stocked that, the carp were just amazing. There was that many. Now you go in there, there's still carp in there. But those big breeder carp, that's all there is. There's no small carp. They get ed every year by the bass. And when I say management, the reason why I propose that we use these estate ponds that are landlocked and we do... Um, carp and redfin management by using the carp to produce native predator fish to eat the carp because you and me oh i'm gonna steam up in here you and me and everyone else we can't catch the carp to get rid of them and we do not want to put a virus in our water to get rid of them when natives are going to chomp them up and then you look at uh google up victorian fisheries you'll see that the uh, marine biologists agree with me with the with the carp as a food source for the Murray cod, it gives them best growth rates and it's the same with the bass, it gives them incredible growth rates. Any system like South Creek, Eastern Creek with good carp in it, or when it had good carp in it, uh, massive bass. So that's sort of part one of my great carp debate guys. Now I'm at a pond over here, at the pond. And this one, it's in dire need of pond management. There's way too much weed, aquatic weed in here, it's too thick. But apart from that, that's a different kettle. Well, that's another story I, I want to do, another video. It's just pond management. If I had my way, see out there with shallow, that'd be an island. And there'd be three holes connected with a channel. And then stockfish should survive in here beautiful, but also your bird population would stay in the middle, which wouldn't get out of control because they'd pick on each other and find a pecking order. So pond, pond management needs to be addressed, but you'll see with this water how clear it is. Now, back in the day when they built this, this was infested, absolutely infested with uh, carp. It was just a brown water pond. It's had bass in it for five or six years now, so it's probably reduced the biomass of the carp by about 99%. There's a few kois and a few European in here. And when we seen uh, where I was before, there was, um, what was it? There was kois, there was mirror carp, there was European carp, and there was another type of carp. So you're going to reduce your biomass and then you're gonna eat the place out and you're gonna stunt the fish, the predator fish, because they'll be living on insects. And predators all work on, on, to, on energy to uh, protein. So the carp create a, a massive boost in their growth rates. And then once they eat these holes out, it slows down. And this is once again why we need management and we need to use the carp in our management. And please don't get on hating me because this, so many passionate people about this calf, it's still my head in. You know, you really got to think about it properly. I might not catch a bass in here today, you know, they get pretty educated pretty quick. But they're in here. And I just wanted to show you like the difference in the water quality for starters. You just ignore the duckweed and all of that. But that's uh beautiful clean filtered water that's because it's got predators in it one bass would be cool actually especially because uh, Benny left his rod in my car and uh, 
shouldn't do that, Ben. It's a GL3 with a... What am I using? A Luvius. Yeah, I'm not going to keep fishing. I'll just put a video up. Here's a video of me and Benny in here the other couple of months ago. And... I mean, it just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Just ignore the duckweed and that, but like, look at the crane there feeding. See that? You're not gonna get any of that at that other pond at Bella Vista because it's just a pond full of carp. You, got, you do have birds there, but it's just not like this. Look at this. And proper weed management really would help. Like, we should be eradicating duckweed out of every pond. Hey, look at that. That's just, that's a beetle's been sitting. It's that thick, sitting on the top of the duckweed. And why we call it duckweed, it's, it's an aquarium weed that was introduced. That's ribbon weed, that's native. But the duckweed was an aquarium weed introduced and when the ducks eat it fly away they go to another pond they shit and these little things are still alive in their bum so they move the weed around there's a lot of people that are going to hate on me for sticking up for these carp but my argument is wouldn't you rather see a native fishery back like it was back in the day You gotta remember it wasn't the carp that wiped out the Murray Cod out west. That's just a fella, that's just false that is. My great uncle was a cod fisherman out of parts. There was thousands of cod fishermen, professional cod fishermen back in the day. They were really good at eating fish. It's a, it's a shame we're not farming them for food source. But anyway, I as a kid seen his um, diary his log books for what he was catching and there's weeks there where he got over two ton of cod it, it'd go 1.2 ton 1.6 ton 2.2 ton 1.8 ton this was week after week after week uh so many murray cod got wiped out and that's what destroyed the cod fishery and the fact that there was no cod in the water in the river when the carp got introduced well of course they've gone nuts and that's an example of what I've shown you on this video, is when you've got no predator in your pond, um, they go nuts. But did you see anything? Did you see a single carp in here rise? You know, the carp have been wiped out because of the, because of the bass population. They, they just, the bass and cod are bullies. They just bash things, you know, they just simply bash things. And the fact that they do that reduces the biomass of the breeders but it also the breeders biomass 100 percent of it gets et by these fish and it's why we should be you like why not why go out and kill a million ton of fish and leave them to rot in the river why don't we use the million ton to create a million ton of murray cod and, and trophy bass and wipe out the billion ton of redfin little tiny horrible nasty redfin that are in all the western waterways it's just a thought. Uh, I'll see. I've, I've got more to to my argument, but it's just it, it's very hard. Am I on? It's very hard to put my point across because I'm not educated. But I, I did, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, I used to walk through the paddocks after a flood, and I would be killing carp in puddles with star pickets. They've they've evolved now they follow the bass up they migrate with the system they never get caught on the floodplains around sydney anymore um they've they've changed and their use has become something we can use uh in our environment food for thought guys